Well, I have to charge that because I have employees, so I'm not even really making that. Normally, normally how I do it is you pay the full price and then we work out a deal after that. Like for the next car. Yes, sir. Okay, so I, I want to tell you something that normally I have a lot of people. They say that they say the same thing, and they get one they get one car done for a good deal, and then that's it. So I have to build a tr I have to build a trust with you. Right, right. So I I, I want to give you a discount, but I have to build a, I have to build a trust with you. That's all. Hey Wayne, so the phone call we had earlier. What was with the guy? He just wasn't budging. He wanted a discount. He said he was going to get you more business. He wanted a discount. He didn't like my price. He was offering more, offering me more business. Just a random guy that called. And um, sometimes people act like, they talk like they know you. Like, come on, brother. Like, yeah, I got you. Uh, more cars. And I'm just like, hey, I don't know you. And I've had multiple people tell me that they were going to give me a discount and they don't follow through with that. So we can start off with the high price that I have and work our way building a relationship. So when, where did it end? These customers ain't loyal. It ended with him saying that he'll pay the full price and kind of got off the phone, which I don't think he's gonna come through. No. I'm gonna be honest. And that's not somebody I wanna deal with, I'm gonna be honest. What are we doing, Wayne? Um, one of the guys that uh, I was discussing with the price and we were negotiating and he didn't like my price, he ended up still showing up. So now, um, Knocking this out because he's waiting. How much, much you want to knock this out? It's gonna take a, I'll say an hour and 30. Dang, an hour 30? Yeah, I've already told him. And he's gonna wait right here? He ain't got no choice. He ain't got no choice. <laughs> and the way this is looking, it's gonna be two hours and 30. It looks a little bit dirtier, man. Oh, it is. Woo! So I'm gonna do a little speed uh, clean, run through it real quick, and then double back and then uh, define everything else. Man. Hey Wayne, I know you had, did this set you back? Cause this is an unexpected detail, right? You know what, it doesn't set me back because that guy is open with the truck. Oh, okay. So he'll, he'll allow it to sit here as long as it takes. So nah, it's not a setback. I gotta learn how to get things in order so that I, I can learn how to juggle things. And that's gonna take me bringing more people in to help me or for my guys to stand up and, and do extra, you know? Oh, you gotta yeah. get that receptionist, man. Right. Or, that, that's it. Right? That's or it. Are you... That's it. No, that's it. You're right. Yeah. Because right now somebody just booked and I haven't put them in the system. This guy pulls up and like this is how it happens right here. I get overwhelmed with a variety of things that hit at once. Bam, my family pulls up. Bam, this. Make a payment with this and then I skip the first thing that I was supposed to do. Got so, you. Now I have to stop and go book them, but I gotta hurry up and get this guy out of here. Wait, so you just told me this isn't even this guy's car. Nah, I think he's outsourcing to you. For real, that's exactly, hey. That's why he thinking, wanted, that's, that's why he was beating you on the prize. That's it right there. He wants to make a profit. He's probably gonna, he's probably charging 250. This actually isn't worth 150. That's why we gotta move to make it worth it. This is a 250 job, but I don't wanna deal with that, bro. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be, you already know, you heard the phone call. I heard it. <laughs> hey, wait, I know you're trying to hurry up, but. Has anybody ever outsourced to you like this before? Yes. Not yeah. even openly, remember, bro. Hey, remember the dealer, remember the car wash event we had? Yeah. When the dude came, he's a detailer. Yeah. But since my prices were cheaper, he sent them there. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was the first time actually. How do you feel about it? Honestly. Honestly. Is it part of business or you um, don't like it's, it? It's a part of business, bro. Yeah. I, I asked what I asked for. If they want to do that, then hey, that ain't none of my business. How would you guys feel if a detailer seen you had an event for a cheaper half off price and they wanted to come and pocket the rest of the money and send a uh, client there as if you're working for them you know what I mean so let me know how you guys will feel down in the comments below about that all right that's a little speed through right there we're gonna hurry up get to the body double back inside touch it up huh. Huh. let's go
Wayne, you're 45 minutes in. Yeah. How's it going? It's going good. Once we finish this, dry up, finishing touches, man. That's it? That's it. All right, Wayne. And I saw you did some uh, engine work? Yeah, I did some engine work. And for all the people that's always saying, oh, you always upselling, changing the prices, I did it for free. How'd you mean? like that? So the other detailer, what he did was, look, he was wet sanding. Look at this, Rez. See all this? So they were wet sanding, and it makes our job look bad. For the people that don't know, what is wet sanding? Wet sanding is literally what I'm saying. You get a sandpaper, you make your sandpaper wet, and you get the sand in. What's the purpose of that? It takes scratches out that are deeper, and then you're going to defect it to perfect it. Oh. Pretty much. Kind of like when you do a polish, you're going to do a clay bar, scratch it up, polish, cleans it up. That's, that, yeah, that's similar. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened there. This, this is going to cost you more. If you want to get this stuff out, we're going to be here all day. If you want to get all this kind of stuff out, you're going to have to leave the car. We have to use, we have to polish this out with the machine. What's going on over there? What's the whole argument about? Oh, he's just trying to get uh, a little more than what the job is actually worth. So, you know, Wayne's just trying to rectify the situation. <laughs> oh, are they still arguing or they're working on something? Well, I think we're kind of passed on working on something because every idea that he comes up with is just unreasonable as far as the customer, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Wayne's doing a good job with him. I mean, he's been giving him options, but he's still just, he's persistently unreasonable. And what do you do when you have a customer like that? <laughs> okay, at what point is Wayne going to say, you know what, forget it, have a nice day, or you think? He's better than me because I would have already done it. You know? Yeah? Yeah, I would have already done it. I would have done it from the get-go too. <laughs> All right, we'll see how it goes. What you got left, Wayne? I really don't know what's going on. Let me be real. No, I really don't know. The dude, he's like a, a like a like a parasite, and you tell him take it for free, and he won't leave. Then he starts talking about God, and I can't let you just give it to me for free, and God will get me, and then I'm just like, well, just give me a dollar then. Just making a joke out of it, like just, just leave so I can finish my work. So now I'm just trying to do the basic stuff that I need to do. Wayne, so the guy finally left. Oh my, thank you, Jesus. All right, so let's Real. go back and recap. What, what started the whole argument? Okay, so this guy is, uh, how do I put it, a different nationality. Yeah. So it was very hard to understand him. So on the phone, I went over my details like I always do. Do you want the shampoo or do you want the the basic inside and out, okay? So he chose the $150 package. So we made an agreement. I told him a little bit of details on what's included. So he gets here, that goes out the window. And where I messed up was, I just started detailing and I didn't do a walkthrough. So if you're a detailer, I'm, I'm definitely starting to do a walkthrough. Because normally my receptionist books the person and in, um, in the instructions, it tells them what they're getting in that detail. So with me not having a receptionist, I just, I'm used to just getting there and hopping, just going in, because they already know what they're doing. They've seen it in the description. If they come out, they tell me whatever extra they, they want done. So this just kind of threw me off. So we're doing the detail and he's just like, hey, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. This was included, do the engine. He just starts adding on more and more stuff, not even stuff that we even talked about. So that was a mess. So I feel like he wanted a full detail. He wanted a full detail. But and he's been dealing with these other detailers where he keeps traffic, keeps them more and more. So he's stuck in that mentality of this is a full detail. Everybody does it. And he's looking at me. Everybody does this. Everybody does it. I'm like, I'm not everybody. This is my company. I don't, you know, we didn't discuss that. So that's pretty much what happened. And I heard you tell him pretty much leave. Yeah. It's free. Everybody told him to leave. I had to grab Isaiah. This man was, because he got a little aggressive and was pointing at me and walking towards me. And then he stepped in. Then I had to grab him and tell him, you can't be acting like that. I got loud every now and then. So it, it, it was a mess. Why didn't he leave? I mean, it was free. You know what? He pulled the God card and he said, I can't sleep with you giving me this for free. Take it for free. No, I can't sleep. I can't do you like that. God will punish me this. He played that role. Mm. Now just go ahead and just do it for the... So he played the God role, and then he hit me with, just do it. Since I'm not leaving, just do it. So he just sat there. Do just, the full detail just do for the full 150. Detail. 
or 150. Yes, sir. And you tell him no. Then he said 200. Yeah. So we came into agreement. And I was like, okay, I'll polish that headlight right there. I'll shampoo it. Just these two spots. And then all of a sudden, as I'm getting started, he starts walking around like, yeah, all this too, all that. And then he add more on again. And I'm like, no, once again. <laughs> so now we're back at it again with the same thing. And he just keeps adding on more after we come into agreement. Adds on more, like, and boy. How did it finally end? It finally ended with, I just wrapped up my $150 detail and just told him like, I'm done. And that was it, and he pressed it again. I said, I had a family to feed. I have a detail over here that these guys aren't even supposed to have to do. You're making this very uncomfortable. Like, you gotta go, like, that's it. Do your thing, you good. Yeah, yeah so you guys just, like, you go ahead and go. And then finally he was just like, I don't feel comfortable, I'll pay. And then as I'm paying, as he's paying, he's just like, hey, $100 more. He's still trying as he's paying. $100 more, I'll come tomorrow, and then you can finish, right? Deal? Deal? No, I can't do it for that price. And he's still trying. <laughs> so we just left it at 150 and as he's leaving, he's still trying. He says, hey, $100, um, I can come back tomorrow, call me. So what? I'm over here trying to, this is wrong. I was trying to get my friend to do it. He's like, ah. <laughs> I heard you on the phone with your friend Tell him, hey bro, I got a customer for you <laughs> I tried everything to get this guy to leave So, is he coming tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, no No? Definitely not He might, hey, knowing him how he is He might just pop up Cause he you just showed I mean? up today, Small right? Small with it, man <laughs> He's been waiting on this, mom He threw him yeah. off Alright, that's a wrap, you guys I want to know what you guys would have done in this situation I'm still over here analyzing everything, gathering everything, what I could have done better, how I could have did this and that, but what's done is done. So comment down below, let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'm still, man, I still gotta go knock this detail. I, I appreciate my guys there assisting me. I would be here all night just because of that right there. But anyways, that's a wrap. Catch you on the next video, let's go. What's up you guys, we out here in the field getting active right now, but I wanna to talk to you guys about an insurance claim, you guys. I had my first big insurance claim, and uh, y'all stick around and hear this story, you guys. I wanna know how you guys would've handled this, or your situation and your cir circumstances. And do you got insurance? You better get that, y'all, stay tuned. Hey, Wayne, so, you actually had to use a, the insurance policy recently. Yes, sadly, but um, I'm glad I had insurance. Um, had a canopy incident, you know, total mistake. Uh, the day wasn't even like a, a, a breeze, like it was just a, like like this, right? Is you feel any wind right now? It's cool. It's cool, right? Yeah, no wind. So all of a sudden we're out there and the wind just, a gush of wind, woo, and caught the whole canopy and it just grinds against the customer's car, the legs just, and I'm holding the canopy and it's pulling me too like this. And I'm trying to hold it and it's just tearing the vehicle up, bro. So thank God I had insurance and it only cost me 250. You know, I apologize to the customer that that happened to. Um, I was actually out with the detailer. So that, it actually wasn't my um, client. It was the guy I was riding with assisting, but it was my canopy. So I took that hit, he didn't have insurance. So can you imagine what would have happened to that guy not having insurance? So he's looking like, dang, man, I don't have insurance. I said, I got you, man. I'm out here working with you. This is just as much as my fault as it is yours. So what we came up with is we got to get them sandbags on them canopies. Um, you know, we can't allow that to happen again. So it was a lesson learned. Thank God for insurance. Only cost me 250 for the deductible. Uh, it sucks for the customer. It was a brand new vehicle, sadly, man. They've only had it for three days. We were coming out for a ceramic coating too. Oh, that's a big job. But the part that sucks, I got hit with the review. He didn't. What? I got this big, long paragraph review with pictures. And because he was like, who's insurance? Who's taking it? So since it was my claim, he asked me for my company and all my information. So I actually took the hit for everything for the Dang. detailer. And um, yeah, it sucks, man. All right, so is this the first time you've ever had to use your insurance claim? In two years, yeah. First, first time, time ever. So wait Ever. a minute, wait. So you've been paying insurance for two years. Never used it, gave him free money. But good thing you had it today. Exactly, it, it, it worked out, man, it worked out. So what company is your insurance? How do you find insurance companies? Um, I, I, State Farm, 
I got it from vending. So when I was doing vending, I just called and asked them like, hey, I'm doing this with vending. I'm not doing that no more. Do you guys cover for vehicles with this business? And they were like, oh yeah, we do coverage for that. So that's how I discovered that through another company business. And, and how much do you pay a month? I pay about two, 200 a month. That's a for good all, amount. For all the vehicles, yeah. Now? Yep, about 200. All right, man, now, it scratches it up. How much do you think that job would have been to fix it if you didn't have insurance? I say about 1500 to 2000 Yeah. Max probably 25 But I'm actually gonna ask him, I wanna know. But I think around that range. In the paint, he was so furious. So, that was my next question. Yeah. It scratched it. What's the first thing you guys did? Did you guys message <laughs> the customers? What were you guys thinking of? Hey, let's fix it. It's, it's not no. funny. But yeah. as soon as it scratched it and I noticed it, I called my insurance before the customer even came out. Mm. I called, I told them the incident, and he comes walking out. And then uh, my friend, he goes and lets him know, like, hey, we scratched your vehicle. And as soon as he comes up to me, I say, I'm on, I'm on with the insurance right now. Like, before he could even say anything to me. Handed the phone to him, just got rocking on it. And for the people that have never done an insurance claim, right? what information do they ask you, your company, your insurance company? They ask a whole bunch of uh, basic information. Um, where was the damage, how it happened, um, the customer's name, phone number, um, where does he want to go to get the vehicle taken care of, uh, car rental options. Oh, dang. Um, hey, that's pretty good, though. They yeah. Take the, they take care of the customer. It was actually really, really simple. Mm. I mean, sadly, the client is the one that has to do more work. Yeah. Me, it's a phone call, information, I'm done, I pay. Really? For them, they got to go get a rental. They got to go figure out what place they want to go to. They got to make phone calls. So it's actually more of a burden for them than it is for me. So, All right, man. Yeah. So the customer got off the phone, gave it back to you. Right. Then what happened? Was it that awkward, hey, we're going to get going or? You know what? Um, or was it, it was, you have it? It was very awkward. He was, he was furious. Yeah. He was very furious. He, he was an older guy. So he was like in his 70s, 80s. He was old. So he couldn't express his anger the way he wanted to. He was just like, you guys are fired. And we thought he was playing. We looked at each other like, oh, he's serious. He goes, you're fired. And we were just like, we said, let's pray. So we actually prayed right in front of him, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, his wife were like, we're believers. We'll pray with you. So we all got in a circle. Even though he was mad, we prayed. We asked that he forgive us. And um, we told him that he actually handled himself very good. Like we encouraged him and I was just like, I want to give you a scripture. Um, Count it all joy when you go through the various trials. And I'm like, this is your trial. This is your opportunity to have grace and mercy on us right now. We know we just messed up your car, but find it in your heart to forgive us. And I, I left him with that and he just looked at me. He was like, and then we walked off. But his wife, she was still smiling. She was like, we know accidents happen. We're believers, we're strong in our faith, but he was being tested that day for sure. <laughs> he was being tested. <laughs> Dang. All right, man, so, do you already know if this changed your insurance policy based off the price or? You know what, so far, um, I asked him that. I have to talk to the owner of the company. They didn't mention anything like that, but I'm waiting on something in the mail. And mm -hmm. if that's the case, it'll come in the mail, they'll let me know. Hopefully not, because it's, it's only my first one. Yeah. Out of those two years, I think I, I've, I've been doing amazing, bro. I know some people that have been tearing stuff up all throughout the years, man. <laughs> got you, man. Got so, you. And man. it's not like I like burnt paint off or did something crazy. Like this was like a pure, like this is an accident. Like, you know what I mean? Rookie, that was a rookie, bro. That that I should know better than that. But hey, accidents happen, sadly. Hey, have you guys ever had to use your insurance? Do you have insurance? <laughs> Comment down below, y'all. Let me know the stories and your tests and trials that you've been through. All right, you guys, um, you know, this was a little personal, but I want to be personal with you guys. I want to let you guys know everything good and bad. So I know you guys probably wouldn't even share anything like this, would you? But I'm glad you guys have come along with me on this journey. Let me know down below if this has ever happened to you, how you handled it. Let's talk about it, you guys. You guys have a blessed one. I'll catch you guys on the next video. All right, Wayne, so this specific customer. You I'll read it to you. You Wait. Let's start from the right, little beginning. Ahead. The receptionist, I remember she was on the phone saying that they were arguing a couple about what they were gonna get. Right. Is this same? This is it right here. So what did they get initially? 
Okay, he just wanted an exterior wash. He stays about 35 minutes away. He got a travel fee. So we go out minimum of $100. We don't go out for anything under 100. Wouldn't be worth it with employees, gas, chemicals. So he just wanted an exterior wash. All right, 125. And his wife says, I want my car wash. They add it on. That's another $100. But I said, hey, I'll do it for $50. So now it's $175. Hey, wait, wait, wait. And right here, he said, okay, or? He says, okay, okay. cool. And then him and his wife are arguing. And then I want the inside done, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes, all right, I just want the inside done. My wife is tripping, blah, blah, blah. I said, that's gonna be another $100 instead of 150. The Supreme Washing Interior Detail is 150, but it, you know, I'll still take 50 off. Cool. He says, okay, 225. He even says it to me. He says, all right, 225, let's do it. Yeah, he says, let's do it. And then all of a sudden, I get a call from my employee saying that they're not getting a tip because well, I was misled with the pricing and it's not adding up. <sighs> Sounds sketchy from the get-go. Like Maybe he didn't want to, you know, maybe because it's why, I don't know. But anyways, so what did he write to your employees? Do you know that? Oh, let me get the message. This is the message right here, man. He loved the service. Yeah, oh, he said that they did an amazing job. It's the best detail that he ever had. But um, the pricing in, he was misled. That's what he said. So that's where we're left at. Okay. But Wayne, if your employees got the message, how could you see it? Okay, shout out to Zippity. Um, Zippity is a all-in-one platform for everything detailing. So the messages, they all download the apps in their phones and we can all communicate with the customers when we're on our way. I can see what they're writing to customers, what the customers say, when they called, a every little thing. I can see it all through the app. So all the customers are right here. Let's see, we've been on the way. Yes, good job. All right, so here's what he says. This is what I've seen. He says, yes, good job on the cleaning. Was, not, was misled on the price. You just lost a customer for life. I would not leave a bad review because the young man did a good job. I wanted to tip them, but after the miscommunication on the price, transaction or overcharging, you can eat for a day with good, with good communication and customer service. You can eat for a lifetime. So, straight up guilt trip right there. Exactly. So he's writing me, he's talking to me. Your employees did a good job, but you misled on the pricing. We sat there for about 10 minutes talking about it. Wait. And then he got on the phone with me again and we were talking and he didn't even say he had a problem. He was like, oh, I was just checking on the price again. All right, I'm about to pay it. And then lets them have it. And then writes me this message instead of, t oh no, man. Maybe so what are you thinking you're gonna do right now? You know what, it's probably not best to call him. It's probably best to just leave it. Leave probably. it, man. Yeah. I mean, it will make great content, but for your business, Yeah. he paid, he liked the service. It's done. It's over with. Okay. What would you guys do? It's a little frustrating when you communicated something. I got it in writing. I updated it in the app after we talked. Like, I mean, what more can I do? Um, it's just frustrating. Hmm. But let me know what you guys would do in the comments. So Wayne, has there ever been a miscommunication like this before with a previous client? Previous client? Uh, no, everything is written. Only time it gets a little complicated is when they get to asking for deals and can you throw this in and then we say a couple prices and they forget, but I don't forget because I put it in the system to make sure it's locked in. But it happens probably once every two months. Hmm. But other than that, um, we've been having a lot of problems with the gas um, charge because of the prices went higher. So we charge a travel fee of 25, anything within um, 25 uh, mile radius, anything over that pretty much like a dollar a mile and um, sometimes we do forget to let the customer know that we input it in and then uh, we'll let them know like hey it's a gas uh, we threw in the gas $25 fee and if they make a big fuss about it then we'll just take it off you know what I mean that's our fault for not mentioning it before we started but for the most part we make sure we let everybody know hey has a customer ever blackmail you saying hey lower the price or I'm gonna give you a one-star review or something like that Nah, never. Never? That's crazy, nah. Mm. If anything, they're just gonna leave it. All right, you guys, you guys heard it. It's not always good all the time. Sometimes you can do everything right, get your numbers down, get it all in writing, and some people just, they're just not satisfied. So um, if you guys went through something like this, I would like to know how you guys handled it. Let me know if you guys would've called him back to discuss it. He already said that he's not gonna get our services or use our services again. 
So I guess there's really no point of calling, right? Because that could just end in a, a, a argument. So I appreciate, hey, if you're watching this, I appreciate you booking us. I'm sorry you uh, were not satisfied with the pricing. And um, I wish you the best. Blessings to you, brother. And um, hey, like, share, subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video. And just keep it real, man. Let's go. Hey, what's uh, going on, man? So what's going on is uh, I have a new receptionist, so I can't blame her for it. He asked for undercarriage cleaning, and I don't have the un undercarriage uh, cleaner. I need to go pick that up. But I have a lot of people asking for it. And um, I thought that it was just engine cleaning on the top. She didn't specifically tell me that it was undercarriage, but it's all a part of the engine, right? So she was just like, oh, he does engine. So, you know, she didn't know. So now I have to go let this guy out here know that I don't have that machine, that uh, tool. And he's been waiting here. The tool that you kind of push and it under, shoots up, right? Exactly. So I'm yeah. going to have to go pick that up on Amazon or something. <sighs> How are you going to handle the customer? He's not happy. When I had him pull the car around, he was already a little frustrated with me. And now I have to tell him that I can't do it. So I think I might have to clean his car for free, vacuum it out, wipe it down, or do something. Yeah. I'll offer that to him for free. But other than that, I don't have it. All Unless right. I can find a detailer that does. Yo, Wayne, how's it going, man? You know what? I'm blessed. Speaking life. Because right now, I got another car that pulled up. This was not supposed to go down like this. I'm doing this for free because he waited here for an extra 45 minutes for something that we don't even do. We don't do undercarriage. And my receptionist didn't know, and I don't think that he said undercarriage cleaning. He just said engine cleaning. Mm. So when he came, he just assumed that it was undercarriage because it's engine cleaning. But no. So I told him since he waited all this time, I'll go ahead and knock out a quick vacuum and wipe down. Plus that puts us back for that one. And then I have another ceramic ceiling out somewhere else that I have booked. That which, you gotta go to or something here? I gotta go to. Oh dang. Yeah. So I gotta go, man. So, so not, you're not getting a detail on this one, just a simple vacuum and wipe down. I'm not getting paid for it. That's just something for him, just a complimentary for him having to sit and wait. Wait, did you tell him that? Or I told him that already. People? I told him I'll go ahead and wipe it down and vacuum it. I didn't want him to leave mad. I got I'm not trying to get no bad rating. Got it. <laughs> got it. All right, Wayne, so the car left. Yes, sir. How was the customer? He actually, uh, his face lightened up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be real. He was really irritated. And I could tell when I had asked him questions. And once he figured out he waited for 35, 45 minutes and I wasn't going to be able to get it done. It made him even more mad than he already was. Mm. And um, when I did his car and vacuumed it and did all that, he, his face lightened up. He said, can I get a business card, man? Yeah, let me know when you pick the undercarriage up. And then that, that was that. He drove off. So hey. So that's all he wanted? Undercarriage? Undercarriage. I charged him 100 for it. <laughs> undercarriage is this. You know what under, do you yeah, know what yeah, it is? Yeah, the little uh, machine yeah. that you roll under the car, raise it on top. That's how, it. How come you don't carry it? just haven't got around to it as simple as that I'm slacking but is it is he the first is that common for customers to ask for I get about once a month mm. it's not I don't get it too often but anybody that has mechanical problems with their car um, they normally require them to do the undercarriage or just the top of the engine and I probably missed out on about six six clients at a hundred dollars so I've been losing out on money because of it so how much is that machine do you know off the top of my head I think it's like 150 Oh, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. But that's just me guessing from yeah. the last time I checked. I don't really remember, but let me know down below. If you guys know how much it costs. I probably could find one just off of Amazon or uh, Craigslist somewhere. Somebody's just giving it away. Navy and Harbor Freight? You don't think so? You know what? Maybe. Sheesh. Maybe. I don't know. All right, man. So might. we're about to wrap up this video, but let the people know what else you got planned for today. Um, I got a ceramic ceiling that I need to go take care of. Um, we asked them to bring it to the shop, but their car is actually uh, out of service right now. And they said they wanted it cleaned and ready because they're about to go get it fixed. Mm -hmm. So they want it looking nice when they hit the road. So they booked for a different date and then they called back and canceled that and said, can you come out now? Mm -hmm. So with everything going on right now, the employees and stuff, I need all that I can get to make sure I take care of all the expenses, man. So that's pretty much where I'm at. All right. Gotta keep rocking. Sounds good, man. Hey, Wayne, so talk about angry customers, right? Have you ever had a customer that was really upset for whatever reason that they're like, you know what? We don't even want the detail anymore. Actually, I had one. I wouldn't say they were very angry, but they were disappointed. Yeah. But I don't normally get people that's just like, I don't want it no more. Just go. 
But um, what happened was I quoted him over the phone and then he wanted me to come and quote it in person. So I said, hey, the price could go up. And he's like, oh yeah, it's good. So I get there and I give him the price and he's just like, nah, I'm good. And he just walks in the house, just go ahead and take his stuff. It's, I'm good. I'm like, bro, I told you that it could go up. Yeah. And I get there and give him the price and he just tells me to go. So I travel like 25 minutes, bro. 25, 30 minutes, unpacked everything, got ready and I should have walked in and uh, looked at everything first, but I set up everything because I thought it really didn't matter. When somebody has you go out there, they know that it could be from this range to this range. Mm. But he told me to pack it up and head home. <laughs> Dang. Hey, this has, I'm sure this has happened to a couple of detailers. Right. Where somebody comes up and they're like, hey, quote me. And then you tell them the price mm -hmm. and the customer's like, hey, price isn't even an issue. Do your thing. And then when they shoot them with the price, <laughs> they're like, oh, never mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they really got it, huh? Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? It happens all the time. All the time. It happens a lot. What do you do to avoid it or you can't? Be straight up with them. Mm. Tell them like, hey, this can be from this range to this range. So they at least know like, hey, it could be this much when I get there. But if you just like, hey, uh, starting price is 185 and you don't tell them a range, then it's going to be bad. Got you. So that's why I've had that problem multiple times because I need to take my own advice. Because I do tell them, hey, starting price, but I don't really tell them the cap of what it can go. Mm. The starting price means it's, it could be 600, it could be 1,000. You can see mold, maggots. You know I mean, you never know what you see roaches in people's car, bro. So, hey, that's, that's 500 a roach, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So that's how I dealt with the customer that was irritated, angry, that's been sitting around and just ready to pop off, man. So you just gotta be calm, patient. And um, I just offered him a free service, even though I didn't have the service he was looking for. So he ended up asking for a card. He ended up being a satisfied customer, even though I didn't make anything, um, I didn't make anything from it. But um, it was a learning lesson um, for my receptionist and for me also. So as she's training, I just gotta make sure we're just learning and growing together pretty much. She feels really bad, but I let her know like, hey, if anything, it's my fault for not explaining that to you. So that came, we handled the problem. The customer left, he's happy. Um, he said he may, may come back to get it done because he called like 15, 20 people, Rez. Right? No, really? And he said, nobody's doing it. I'm surprised, why aren't um, detailing shops and mobile detailers doing the undercarriage? Am I the only one? Comment down below, let me know if you guys are doing the undercarriage. And if so, how much it costs and uh, what that service is running for you guys to get that done. And also down below, let me know how you guys handle the angry customer. Let me know the story and um, let's talk about it so that when this arises, hopefully it doesn't. If it does, we know how to handle it. Um, let's talk about it. Let's be about it. Let's go. Yo, Wayne, you're enjoying your break, your Taco Bell, and then this customer calls you, threatening you. What's up, what's going on? Yeah, he said he was gonna give me a one star. He was like, I thought the service was gonna be better because of this, this, and that, and that, and this popped up, and this. But anyways, that's all it is. All right, y'all, I'm just playing. But anyways, what happened was, um, he was like, there's water spots all over the car. He was like, the windows aren't as clean as they should have been, and you didn't shine the inside. So I was like, for one, uh, we have spot-free water. That's not possible. So he said his dad cleans the car. Pops got out there with that mineral oil in the water. <clears throat> and did that. My brother said he already seen it. Ray has said he already seen it before. And uh, so we got that straightened out. Then he was like, well, the shine on the inside. And I was like, hey, if you didn't specify you wanted that, we didn't do it. And then I apologized to him. I said, I, I apologize that I didn't offer it to you. But he said he only had $200. So that was already exceeding the price. So I left it alone. Like he ain't got the money to do that. So I'm not going to add it. So he was like, well, I told your wife that I wanted everything. I said, hey, everything can be a $1,500 job. You have to be specific with detailing and tell me exactly what you want. He's like, well, I thought when I said everything that that was gonna be, no, you have to say what you want. So I said, you know what, sir? I'll come out at the shine for you, uh, touch up whatever is on the windows. I wanna let you know that we strive for perfection. We're not perfect. Where you let me down also is you didn't have nobody come and check the car before we left. His pops came out there and he looked at it a little bit and was like, all right, if there's a problem, we'll give you a call. And I already knew in my head that was gonna be a problem, Rez. Like, wow. And I was like, hey, you should have been there to check this car so we can give the go. Now I could have been rude and been like, hey, do what you gotta do. Hit the star rating up, I'm not coming back. Or I can go back, 
spend 10 minutes to put some shine on there, touch the windows up again, and leave. But Pops, he's 75 years old, he gonna have to go hobble up out here and come check these windows now. Yeah, my cousin, uh, you, you, you need something from me? Oh well, gosh, we're over here uh, doing the pricing for my website. We're having some problems merging from one website to another, pricing, update, upgrading stuff, and taking stuff off. It's, it's been a whole lot. And I'm crunched for time. My next appointment's at 2 p.m. So we gotta be, I gotta go and she's holding me back. I'm blaming it on you. Yeah, put the camera on her. Put it on her, <laughs> this is who hold me back. <laughs> What's really bothering me about this, I told him like, hey, you, that hurts for you to disregard my whole detail from some simple problems. One, I didn't do the water spots. Two, you didn't ask for the shine. And he is treating me as if, you know, I didn't do my job properly. I spent three hours on that car. Pet hair was insane. Me and my brother was out there sweating and, and energy just drained. And then to get a phone call, wow, well, I thought you five stars that, you know what I mean? Just disregard my whole company. And all we're gonna do is go shine it and touch up a couple spots on the window. How hey, what package did he get? He got the Supreme Wash and interior detail with pet hair removal, which was only charged an extra 25, which should have been an extra 75. It was insane. It took us an extra, what, 45 minutes just to get the pet hair out. And he told us he only had $200, so we just kind of left it alone. But look uh, at When that. did he hit you up saying he only had $200? Before he booked or after he booked? After he booked, I got a word from my wife that he said that he only had 200. So she was just like, well, that was gonna be the tip that they were gonna give us, which now we got no tip. It was just all in the whole package, so. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel it's the customer or do you feel it's something else? I feel it's the customer being nitpicky mm -hmm. and not knowing. Um, it's those people out there, man. You could do an amazing job and they're still gonna find something that, that that's wrong. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Man. But you're gonna go back? I'm gonna go back. You're gonna go do that? Yeah. And then go to another detail? You're trying to give me a one stop. I'm not taking that hit when I can fix it. I fix, I try to fix all my problems if I can. If I'm in a situation where I can't get to it, then it's, hey, I apologize. I can't get to you until a week from now. And most of the time I end up taking a hit for that, but it is what it is, man. Fix your problems. Yo, Wayne, so you just got done cleaning the windows, the inside. Hello. When you showed up, Hello. what'd you tell them? So pretty much what happened was, um, it was actually water spots all over the window and he was complaining he couldn't see. And he said there's water spots all over the car. And um, he pretty much was saying that it was us, it wasn't there before. How did they get there? And I kept explaining to him, we had spot free water that wasn't us. We had videos of it being there before. He, uh, Pops wasn't trying to hear it. He was just like, no, I don't know, no. I go to the, this car wash, this isn't, no. This was not here. So he walked off right in the middle of me talking. I'm like, other. And then that was that for that. So I called uh, his son back and he said that, hey, uh, you know, he's older. Um, it's harder to talk to older people when they're, you know, they're in their ways. He was just like, I appreciate your professionalism coming back out, trying to fix the problem. Um, I'll try to get it out myself. He said he's gonna use some vinegar and something else. He's gonna try to get it out. If he can't get it out, he says, I'll be using your services again and just said, thank you again. And he's, a, he's, in, the, he's in the force, he's law enforcement. Who is the son of the- The son. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that. You can't please everybody. And I, I tried my best. You know At least you mean? tried, man. You came yeah. back. Try to make it right. Right. On to the next job. On to the next job, man. Yo, Wayne, what we doing over here, man? Waiting for the client to come out to take care of the car that's right next to us right now. How can we get started? Because the last time from the last video, we did the wrong car. <laughs> so, uh, learning from my mistakes and being patient instead of rushing it. I got you. <laughs> so, the detail was at two. We got here at two. It's been about 10, 15 minutes. What are the steps you take right now? I told him I was gonna be here at two, we confirmed. So if anything, he should be out here. Since that's not the case, I waited 15. I gave him a text, wait a couple more minutes and then give him a call. Mm. He seemed bothered when I called him. Oh, you called him before getting here? And he seemed a little bothered like, but that's how some people sound. Yeah. So I'm gonna just call him. Let him know we're out here. Is 
रहे हैं Gotta be. Hey, just wanna let you know we're out back. Okay, thank you. Bye. So we're gonna be working in the garage, thank God. So should be one of these that's gonna be opening pretty soon. And I've actually, uh, this is my second time coming back here. So this is the North Highlands area. This is the area that I run, that I rank first. And um, it's nice to get the companies that are two minutes down the street from me. It's great to know that you're right next door to home when you finish and just go back, get the band ready for the next day. So, yep. Now, when waiting for a customer, how long do you wait until it's like, what, you go knocking at their door or do you just leave? I knock at the door too. I mean, it all depends on how much the detail is, how many details you have that day, how crunched you are for time. If I'm not that busy and things are spaced accordingly, you know, I'll wait as long as 20, 30 minutes if I don't have a, a real busy day. And um, that's about it, man, yeah. Let me know what you guys would do, situations you guys been in, you guys have been in. I mean, it's rare that I run into something to where nobody's there and they just leave me hanging. I think that's happened about two or three times. I think that's somebody that's, they're supposed to, supposed to be open in the garage. Yeah. yeah. I got you, man, I got you though. So, 20, 30 minutes. That's still too long though. Yeah. What's the next detail after this? After this, oh, this is it. That's it for today? Everything else um, got pushed to different days. Um, that's, that's pretty much it, yeah. So you did have time to wait? Yeah, I got time to wait right now. It's the last one. Yeah. So what we do, we did, that was four? Nah. You, that was three? Yeah, four, four. That was four? Yeah. So we did four today. Oh. Yep, it was supposed to be six. Um, we lost one due to conflict of time. And then the other two got pushed uh, to another day. Wait, I thought you said the guy said what's up already. I called him again, and he said that he's gonna open the garage. Tell one of his employees that hasn't happened. This is one of the situations right here. It's already been 30 minutes. Hey, I'm just curious, as a detailer, is that an extra fee? Or do you rush it? How do you make up for it? As you're speaking about this, I'm thinking about this right now because I've never had to charge extra for a fee, but it should be. That's time is money. At this point, I'm I'm getting there ready to just go back to the shop because it's right down the street. And was it the maintenance? No. Let me see. Let me see what it is. First of all, I need to go buy a hat, bro. This hat is, that's from all that sweat. Oh, tip, Rez, coat your hats. If you got fabric uh, coating, if you spray the fabric coating on it all around, it repels it against your sweat. I forgot to coat this one, yeah. You didn't know that? Yeah. So this detail was 250. And it's the shampoo? Inside and out. Inside and out. First time customer? Second time. And it's the same vehicle I cleaned last time. You think maybe he just... I think... Super busy? I think he forgot to either call or he forgot, the employees forgot to open the gate. I think I'll just ride him. I think I'm gonna let it go. I'm done. Right now I'm at the point to where I'm, I'm done for the day. It's already been 30 minutes. It's already been 30 minutes and I called him three times already. And he was not giving you attitude, but you could tell he was. Yeah, he was uh, a little, yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll be there at two. That sounds great. All right. Two, got here, not here, texted him, then called him again and still like, dang. I'm gonna do one more lap around honking my horn. What would you do in this situation? I'm a type of person, I don't, I don't like to bother. And from the conversations, it feels as if I'm bothering him when he booked me. We so. gotta get up out of here. If he ain't gonna come, to, he ain't gonna come. And we gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> this too. We're not answering now. 
He's not answering? No. Sheesh. Well, I guess, bro. That's it. I guess so. I could be spending this time working on my website or something. Oh. All right. Let's go back to the shop. Hey, Wayne. So, that's it, man? He didn't hit you back up? That's at it. all? No. I think somebody took the car home. I think that Toyota Highlander that was next to us, yeah. he ended up taking it and going home. I think that was it. But I think it was just a miscommunication because he wasn't there. Mm. So they were on a different page and then he was on a different. So the guy was just like, I got to go. He don't know how to tell me that, hey, he has to go. So he just ignored me. So stuff yeah. like that is rare that that happens. That's why we take deposits, which I didn't get one, sadly. So you're done? That's a, that's a wrap, man. All right, has this ever happened to you guys? How do you guys handle it? Every now and then, I will, I say 65% of the time I take deposits and uh, most of the time I'm just slacking, I guess. And I wish I would've got my deposit on that one, but you win some, you lose some, man. Tell them, we were just checking in to make sure we're still good for the appointment. Okay, how much was it? It's gonna be 165. Okay, that's a lot. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's only because we're, we're detailers, so we're going to be very detailed. It's going to take us about two to four hours. What? Yeah, so it's not a car wash. So usually at a car wash, you're in and out. This is something that's going to take time. So please just make sure you have time for us to complete the job. So, so we're the guys that come in and get all the nooks and crannies and the air vents and under the seats, between the seats. So we're very detailed. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a detailed wash. Like, I've got like on Yeah, we're gonna get all that for you. We take care of every little detail. Okay, this is 165. You can't give me a discount? That's up to you going. You want, you want to, okay. yeah. Okay. So this customer over here, man, got one of those. Is it a low baller? Is it someone who doesn't understand the business? What is it? Well, what it is, I already told her the price. Uh -huh. And now she's coming back like 165. I'm having to re-explain myself. And I'm giving this detail to my brother right here. Me, I don't like to negotiate. I said 165, that's it. So I gave it to him and told him to deal with it because I'm handing it to him. I don't have time to do it. She wants it at one and that's gonna conflict between my times with this detail. So but she wants she's, a discount. she's trying to get that discount. So I want to leave it up to him because I don't want him to miss out on the de detail. So me personally, I wouldn't do it. So what's up, you gonna do it LA? What, what happened, man? I'm not gonna let the ball slip through my fingers. I just started this detailing, so yeah, I gave her, I gave her $35 off. Okay. I can bite the bullet on that. So where does that leave you at? 130. 130? 130. Okay. Yeah, and then she might tip, so it might put me at back at 140, 145. So okay. I'm not, I'm not. So yeah, that's what do you normally charge for your in and out? In and out maintenance? Yeah. Well, not maintenance the first time. Like, what do you normally charge? At least like 110. So, 110, I mean, so I'm he's still, still winning. I'm so. still winning. She don't know that though. <laughs> right. She's still winning. She called for that because I already negotiated with her. What I would have hit her with was, hey, we already negotiated the price and we already confirmed. I would have hit her with that, but. But she said she was about to pass on it right here because. Oh, for real? Yeah. So oh, okay, what, okay. She's like, how much is it? And she she, like, that's cold though, bro. We already confirmed. That's what, hey, that's you know why, what I mean? That's why I came over to you. <laughs> It's all good, man. Like, all right. Hey, if you, you good at reading people. You notice the shoes about the, bro, yeah. Was, bro, I'm like, hey, something is better than nothing. Exactly. Especially like me starting off three months ago. Yeah. Hey, I'm hey. gonna take what I can get. He winning, cause I was charging 65 for today. So to be charging 125 out the gate, he winning. I, well, I didn't do that. Hey, Wayne, so LA, did give him a discount, but because he's trying to grow his business, he needs the business. Would you, is that a smart move or you think he should have stuck with his, the guns? For me where I'm at, I would stick to my guns and my price, but for where he's at starting, he went down to 120, 135 and his original pricing is 125. So he's still in the range. New detailers coming in, charging 25, 35, 45. That hurts the game because of us detailers out here charging our prices. Um, you get the customers that say, well, I got a guy over here that's gonna charge 25. Why is yours so expensive? So it, it hurts in that aspect. So if everybody came in with a starting price of 65 at least, I feel like that's a good starting point starting off. 65, 75, 85 trucks, lifted, 
extra 15 for lifted trucks. You know what I mean? I say keep it within that range. Now, Starting. Now, I know a couple detailers, man. They started last month. Right. And they already want to charge 150 because they're using the best chemicals and they're going to do all this work. What do you think of that? I think that's smart. Oh, really? I feel like if you're coming in, you know what you're doing. Why can't you charge the same thing that I'm charging? They don't know what they're doing, though. If they don't know what they're doing and they don't have the um, expertise to get certain stuff off or to add certain stuff on, you know what I mean? Then that's like coming in, training somebody boxing, right? And you only been boxing for a month and you're acting like, you know what I mean? You've been a pro fighter. I mean, I, that, that could be a problem. So I feel like you should get your feet wet and do that. But put it like this, Rez, 150, if you coming in and you know what you're doing and you've been out there doing car washes, you've been out there with detailers, why can't you charge the same thing? You know what I mean? If you know what you're doing. Now, if you get out there and you messing stuff up now, <laughs> that's that, I mean, that's a bad look just for the detailing industry, just period. But let me know what you guys think. Should, should people charge the same price I'm charging coming out the gate and they know what they're doing? Or should they wait, get their name out there more and charge 65, low, lower rates? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Get out the gate, if you know what you're doing, you should be able to charge the same thing I'm charging. Or do you feel like they should get their feet wet a little bit more, learn a little bit more, then charge more? I think it depends on where you located at. Yeah? It depends on where you located at. Well, let's if talk you about it. You don't want to come in under balling mm -hmm. somebody, but at the same time, it just depends on where you located at. So, yeah, I'm gonna be a little bit cheaper. I'm, I'm catching up with Wayne, but mm -hmm. I'm not about to be charging Wayne prices quite yet. It's all, a, it's all a matter of time. Soon yeah. as this man start picking up, yeah, I already one know thing, that man. One, one, thing, <laughs> one thing, when you start charging those prices, yeah, you gotta have a platform to stand on. So when somebody question it, check my Google reviews, check yeah. my YouTube, check my Instagram. That's why I'm worth this. Nobody complained about how much a, a, a Gucci belt costs. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Little belt. <laughs> so. Hey Wayne, so I just heard you talk right to LA. Uh -huh. He got a job from right. you. Okay. Of that discounted person, they want a discount. And now, what's going on? He's seeing that it's gonna be more work, and he's calling me. You know, asking like, hey, what am I gonna do? Because their seats are way more. It has a whole bunch of scuffs in the seats, and you can't get those scuffs up the black marks without having that magic eraser, which we call it. So he's gonna wipe it, get it clean the best he could. And if she points it out, then he's gonna have to let her know like, hey, we're gonna have to bring it back to the original price if you want me to deep clean this right here. So that's why I don't like to mess with my prices, man. Cause of that right there. Now, do you think she's gonna be like, I thought that was included on the price or how do you think she might react to this? I told him he has to read her. That's why I'm real big on reading people to see like, okay, I'm gonna have to go about it this way, that way. You gotta be able to read people. So um, he's gonna have to show her. So he's gonna finish the car, see if she just likes it without taking it off. And if she's like, oh, it's good, then he's gonna leave it. But if she points it out, then it's gonna be a, hey, you want me to deep clean and go an extra mile? That's gonna take me an extra 30 minutes. We're gonna have to bring it back to that price. And let me show you. Then he's gonna pull out the magic eraser, do a spot. And then it's like, dang, that's a big difference. We'll go with that. So that's how he's gonna have to go about it. That's how I will go about it, so. Hey Wayne, so LA just called you. How did it turn out with that customer? Uh, he went ahead and upselled and uh, presented her what she was getting for the price that she was uh, stating. And he did an example for her, like I stated before. And she said, I want that. And he brought his son with him. So when, it, when it's, hey, that was another, hey, sometimes, bro, that helps. So she had her grandson with her and they was playing and that's your grandson, you bring him everywhere you go with him. So it, I feel like it kind of softened her up, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But she ended up giving him 200 instead of even my price. He went from 135, skipped my price, 165. And that man went to 200. So he's gonna hit the leather with uh, Mr. Clean, clean up all the streaks and everything. And that man got a good deal. Yo, this isn't... Oh yeah, this is... Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. So, what did he order? Um, he got the inside and out vacuum wipe down, cup holders, door gems, air vents, you know, complete wipe down, no shampoo, everything but a shampoo. And um, due to this condition up in here, this is all I needed to see right here. It's at 230, that's 350, bro. Right yeah. off the bat. What about shampoo? 
without shampoo. And if he wants to add a shampoo, it's gonna be an extra 100. Which he's probably not gonna want the shampoo. These seats are good. Um, shampoo, he needs to shampoo on the front of these. Damn. Due to the condition of the vehicle, it's gonna be 350. It's the second time I did this car. The first time I did it, it wasn't this bad. And that was almost a year ago. I remember mm. it like it was yesterday, bro. And now you message the customer, mm -hmm. you're pretty much telling him it's gonna be more. Where you at with that? Like, do you feel confident in doing that still? Or do you feel like, ah, uh, what if they want a lower price or they say no? Right now I'm at a point if he was to say no, I would just leave, I'm gonna be yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, I feel confident when I write. I'm still working on doing it in person, mm -hmm. but they would never know that I'm uncomfortable. That's the thing. I got it's you. A bug. <laughs> but um, yeah, they would never know that I'm uncomfortable because you got to put on, you know, you got to puff the chest up a little bit like this, and then you got to make sure you, you know, you be a man. I'm just playing, y'all, but I'm being serious. Comment below. Let me know how you guys feel about um, letting the customer know that it's going to be more. Do you guys let it go, suck it up, and just do it the first price? Do you guys um, let them know right away? Do you wait till they leave and text? Do you wait till they leave and call? Um, how do you go about it, and what are you working on to improve in that area if you haven't already? Comment down below. So Wayne, are we waiting for him to reply back or are we getting started? Um, most likely he's, uh, he's gonna approve it 95% um, of the time. It's an approval. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get set up and get ready to do the vehicle versus sitting here and not getting a reply. Wait, my bad, I was reading. Versus sitting here and not getting anything done and he says yes, so I just got a message. Somebody said thanks. No, he hasn't wrote yet. If he doesn't reply through the message, I'm gonna have to call him. Oh, I wanted to let you know that we're here. We checked the condition of the vehicle. And I wanted to let you know that it's going to be $350 instead of the price that we quoted you. And I wanted to get your approval before we continue. Okay. All right. The deposit, um, I'll just go ahead and send it back over to you. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Bye. That's a wrap. Wrap it up. No. Come on, Javari. Yeah. We're not doing it. it. He didn't agree to the price. When you told him that it was never 350, what was his initial reaction? He said, oh, well, um, I'm not gonna be able to afford that at the moment, so what are we gonna do about my deposit? He said, we go ahead and send it right back to you, no problem. Simple as that. But I already had told him it's on condition. He told me it was extremely dirty. What can you do? What can I do, man? I'm not about to spend three, four hours on something that I'm only getting paid oh, wait, 200 wait. for. Shampoo? No shampoo. No shampoo. I'll be honest. It wasn't even, it wasn't it, dirty to me. Okay, well, anytime, well, dirty, any, anytime, dirty. anytime we say it's not that dirty, what we end up doing? Steam cleaning the vents and doing a whole bunch of extra. That's how I, that's how I feel when it comes to every job. I see it. I see it. Oh, it's just a little dusty. You know what I mean? It's not that bad. We can knock this out. We end up spending three, four hours. This is not a basic. A basic is an hour and thirty minutes. Is this gonna take an hour and thirty minutes? Three hours. Exactly. Four hours. Why shouldn't we be compensated for that if it's gonna be extra? So you know what I mean? What you think, Reyes? It look a little bit extra. It, it seemed like a lot of work. Yeah. But I mean, I mean we could. But here's the thing, Wayne. What's up? You don't need a 250 right now, bro. I, I really don't need it right now. <laughs> I'm good <laughs> right now, good and I'm not taking. I'm not taking. You know, I'm not doing extra, man. Hey, for an inside and out detail, what would you have charged for this? For this condition, um, it's 230. Sound good to you? Comment down below if you would have did this or if you would have left. Also, me personally, it's a no go for me. After doing this for two years and some change, I already know that this one's gonna take me three to four hours. And for $230, inside and out, it's not worth it. And I gotta pay somebody, I'm not really making that 230. Subtract 100 oh, from my brother. I, I pretty much made a basic detail after that. So that's, that, that's a wrap. This happened, this happened a couple times before. Yeah? Yeah. Where you showed up. And then you refunded them the deposit, of course, right? Yeah. 
Oh, dusty. Dusty. He gonna write in a message extremely dirty. <laughs> and then not expect it to go higher. Okay, so I told the customer that the vehicle was gonna be on condition. Gave 100 deposit. I wanna know if you guys would take 50 of that because since he was told it was on condition of the vehicle, so he knew the price could vary. So because I came out here and spent my time, shouldn't I be compensated for that? This is something new. So let me know in the comments down below. What you think? Would you refund the customer all his money or would you take at least a uh, gas fee? Honest, honest opinion. After they were told, 15? He said a little something, something on. I thought they would still be mad. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you're saying, you are $25, my wife said, for the travel fee. That's what I normally charge. So $25 travel fee. That's cool. But I think that's fair. So now, Amy, we need to write the next customer and uh, see if, uh, if the car is available. Because now this is just this just twisted. That guy was kind of picky, right? Or am I tripping? Very picky. But if you see his vehicle, you know he's going to be picky. He got all the extra little gadgets and stuff I ain't ever seen that he's telling me to clean. All right, so what we got going on today is a Boss Special with an exterior UV protection on all the black plastic on the car. And um, y'all check it out. That's gonna run us about 125 inside and out. Vacuum, tire shine, rim cleaning, and the UV protection on the plastics. Let's get to it, y'all. Charge $85 for trucks, but since it's lifted, you got extra work in here and just cleaning under here that's a lot of work it may not seem like it so we add a little extra so it's a hundred dollars for lifted trucks for us to clean under but besides that that's that's about it do you like it Wayne? Do you like it? um it looks like it's a headache bro i mean it, it it can be a headache the fact that i gotta get down there you gotta make sure you have knee pads and if you ain't got knee pads then you're back so it can be a headache depending on your mindset and how hungry you are. So special request for this customer, he don't want any chemicals on his rims because uh, they look look real expensive. What do you think these is, 30s? Uh, <laughs> why wouldn't he yeah. want um, chemicals on those though? What well, he do? honestly, that, that's something I need to research myself. So I'm, I'm guessing he doesn't want to mess them up. Maybe it's a certain type of, you know, material. I don't know, you guys tell me. It's the first time for me. So I'm just listening to the customer. Are you having fun today? Mm -hmm. With your dad? You yeah. like working on the cars? Mm. What are you going to do with your money you make today? Just save it. Um, this is spray wax to make the car shine. You know, after we're done drying, it's going to be just going to make the color pop more, basically. Was kind of picky, right? Or am I tripping? Very picky. But if you see his vehicle, you know he's gonna be picky. He got all the extra little gadgets and stuff I ain't ever seen that he's telling me to clean. So he was like, "Hey, I love how you detail. I want you to come back every Friday at eight, seven, eight a.m. And um, I'm gonna be coming back, but I missed a whole lot. Like, bro, I don't even know what to call it. It's like the suspension. He had a whole bunch of metal pieces in there with engravings and." Bro, it's a whole bunch of stuff. So he was just pointing it out for me for the next time I come so I can get it. So he said, we'll discuss the, like the pricing. So it'd probably be, I'll probably charge him like 80, 80 every Friday or something. Now nah, he, uh, that was 125 actually, but he gave me uh, 25 more. Do you get a lot of bigger customers? Um, Actually, no, most people come and look and it just like, it looks amazing. and. They give me a tip and then they're done. But it's rare that I get somebody that's like right here, right here, right here. And I don't you know. Usually do the undercarriage. Um, I charge them ahead of time. Like they let me know ahead of time. So if it's lifted, that's automatic that I do the undercarriage and they get charged more. And we made it out in this 109 degree weather. Hey, if you guys like what you guys are watching, like, share, subscribe, support what we doing, man. We motivating and encouraging people to get going on their business. Can we do that? Let's go. Ah, we out.